Welcome everyone. I am going to solve a transmission line problem using a smith chart. So in this problem it is said that we have a transmission line, lossless transmission line. Let me draw the transmission line, lossless transmission line that is operating a load. The impedance of load is 40 minus J120 and the transmission line got the characteristic impedance Z0 equal to 100. So because there is a impedance mismatch, so it will get some reflection here. Now we are going to find the complex reflection coefficient at the load, standing wave ratio and this parameter. So let me solve this question by using a Smith chart. So we normalize the load impedance that is ZL over Z0. So 0.4 minus J 1.2. So now I look at this on the Smith chart. So on the Smith chart, you see 0.4, the resistive value is 0.4 over here, and the induct capacitive value, this negative Z1.2, is over here. So negative 4 and 1.2 intersects at this point. So this is my ZL. So now what we have to do, we have to draw a reflection circle, constant reflection circle by taking, putting the center, putting the compass at the center on point zero and passing through the ZL. So this is my constant reflection circle. So I should write this is constant reflection circle. So now what is the value of the reflection? So you have to take the radius. Radius is this mass. So let's say this is your radius. And from this, you have to put this on the reflection coefficient. You see the reflection coefficient with respect to the voltage. So that is like reflection coefficient with respect to the voltage on the top scale. And reflection coefficient with respect to the power and the bottom one. So the top one we get the value is over here. So this is point seven two seven two three or just you can write seven three point seven three C 
so you can write the reflection coefficient answer for part A. Part A says the reflection coefficient magnitude is 0.73. Now we also need to know the angle of this. Angle basically this is the angle scale, 80, 70 is negative. So to read the angle properly, just you put the center, the ZL line and look uh, down here. So you see this value is like 7246. So this is 76, negative 76 degrees. So record this. So this value is negative 76 degrees. Now we have to find the standing wave ratio, that is S. And the standing wave ratio you can also get from this mid chart. So you see this is a standing wave ratio scale. And this is in terms of voltage and this is in dB. So we looking for voltage would be good. So that take the same radius and put it here. You will get it is 5, 5.2, so it is 6. 6.3 So your reflection coefficient is 6.3 So actually we are reading these values from here, so there may be some observation error. So you should to get at least uh, one digit accurate after the decimal place. So like here five, if this is six. So you should be very definite that this is six. Then you have to guess something here. So someone could guess 6.2, someone could guess 6.3, or someone could get 6.5 like this, uh, sorry, 6.25. So something higher than 6. So if you get 6.2 or 6.3, that will be good enough to get the perfect score here. So now we have to find. We have to find the load admittance. So we have to, we already solved for uh, standing wave ratio, reflection. Now we have to find admittance. So admittance is just opposite to ZL point. So to reach to the opposite direction, just we extend this ZL. So we pass through the center and go to the opposite direction. So just here, like I, you know, this is not necessary that you have to draw a straight line here. If you put your ruler or a scale here and can, can locate the point at the outside, outer or opposite, that will be okay. So it is not necessary that you have to draw a line and show you how you have done that. It is not necessary. So necessary is just you have to find the point directly opposite to this. 
this is somewhere here. So just this is not necessary that you draw some line here. So I get the point over here. So this will be your YL. So now if you write your YL value, you see YL is this it will be 2, this line is 2, this line is 3, so this is 2.5, so slightly less than 2.5, so it would be 2.3, this is 2.2, 2.4, so maybe 2.35. So I write YL is equal to 0.235 and the this values over here is 0.7 and that is 0.875 so we could write like 0.7 plus j 0 0.748 or 75 is okay so just this is opposite to the zl point just you translate this line and find the opposite point over here now the yl this YL will be divided by 100. So if you divide by 100, then it will be 2.35 plus J74 sorry, 7.48 millisiemens. This time I made it 10 to the power negative 3 come to milli yeah. md So next question says, find the location and value of maximum inductive reactance on the transmission line. So now we have to find the maximum inductance value on the transmission line. So this is my transmission line, basically this is the transmission line. So if you see, if you start from here and moving on the line you see the inductance value is increasing because the x values are getting higher so it is increasing it is increasing just here it is start decreasing so it increases up to this point so up to this point the inductance value will go up so this value is 3.2 like slightly less than 3.2 3.2 so you can write 3.18 3.18 so the maximum inductance value so you can write y sorry x L max XL max can be 3.19 or uh, if you want to write the uppercase LX max that will be 319 
ohms. And what is the location of this? So to find the location, just I translate, the, uh, draw a line here, passing this point. Basically, to find the location, you have to read the omega uh, lambda scale. So the lambda scale outer lambda scale has shows that this value is 0 0.22, 0 0.22, 224, 226. So you can write, okay, I write nearest value, 0 0.226 lambda. And the value over here is 352354. So you can write 35. So just shortly, a little bit shorter than 3.6, so 3.5.8 lambda. So now we find <coughs> the distance from ZL to this point. This is your XL max, XL max point. So what is the distance from here? You have to go to the towards the generator. That means clockwise. So if you go clockwise from here, the distance up to this is 0 0.5, then it goes to zero, and up to this is this, 0 0.226. So we can find the distance here. So the distance will be distance from the load is 0.5 minus 0.358 plus 0.226 lambda. So that is 0.5 minus 0.358 plus 0.226. So that is 0 0.368 lambda. Or you can write it like 3.68 meter. Now you have to find The location at value of maximum capacitive reactance on the transmission line. So if you again go this way, so this capacitor value is increasing and it will go to the maximum at somewhere here. And it is obvious that the point you put uh, per cap inductor, you will get the same value for the capacitor. So this value will be like the same that you got for inductor. So we got 3.19 or 2, 3.2. So like you can write XC max will be negative 3.19 or approximate to negative 3.2. That means Xc max will be 319 or 320 ohms. And the distance from the load is, so now let me find the distance over here. So this value is 27, 272, 274, 275, 275 lambda. So now again we start from here and go all the way to this. So just it will be point 0.5. 
minus 0.358 plus 0.275 lambda. So the value is 0.5 minus 0.358 plus 0.275. So that is 4 on 7. 4 on 7 lambda. Or you can write 4.17 meter because lambda is 10 meter. So now we have to solve for part B. Part B says use a Smith chart to determine the value of series resistance in order to reduce the standing wave ratio on the line to a minimum. So Now basically part B says about the matching of the system. So the transmission line has a load here and we see there is a deflection because of the mismatch of the impedance. Now we are going to do some work here to make the system reflection free or to minimize the reflection. So that is 0.4 minus the 1.2. So at the very first step, we are adding a series resistance here. So let me write the value RS. I write normalized value RS. So the resistance is placed in order to reduce the standing ray of the line. So it, it will be much clear series resistance at load, at load location. So then the question will be clear. So we are adding a series resistance at the load location to reduce the reflection, standing wave ratio to the minimum. A standing wave ratio basically is the radius of the circle, right? So if you can come closer to the center, then SWR will be less or reduced. So if you want to minimize SWR, we have to add a series resistance over here at the load and we will add a series resistance. So what is the idea here if you have ZL, so at this stage you have ZL. So ZL is equal to 0.4 minus the 1.2. Now if you add a series resistance and look from the from this side, so what will be the impedance now? So let's say the impedance is ZLN and that will be the load ZL plus RS. That means 0 0.4 plus RS minus j 1.2 so we're adding a series resistance but we are not changing the in the capacitance or imaginary part just only adding a resistive part a resistance value so if you add a resistance then what will happen so you see you are still on 1.2 line so it's still on 1.2 line, but your real value is increasing. So now here you are on 1.2 line. So you are on this line, but your R value is increasing. So here it was 0.4. Now it could be 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7. So I am increasing my R. I am increasing my R. As you increase your R, you see the radius it is getting down. So getting down, decreasing, decreasing. But if you keep adding resistance, then at certain location, it again start to build up, right? It start to increase. So you have to find the location where the radius or distance from center to that line is the lowest. 
so to find the lowest point what we could do we could draw a circle just touching that point so this is my So I got a circle here, just touching, touching this point. So you have to add or increase your resistance up to this point, so up to this point. If you read this value here, that will be ZLN. And this ZLN has a value, if you see the real number uh, part here, that will be 1.5. 1.5 and the imaginary part is J 1.2 so we got the impedance at that point so the question says on the chart determine the new load impedance ZLN so we got ZLN ZLN is 1.5 minus j 1.2 so if i find the uppercase z ln so it will be 150 minus j 120 ohms <coughs> so how much resistance we add it so you see we add 0.4 plus rs is 1.5 so that means rs is 1.1 so uppercase RS is 110 ohms. So you got the series resistance value is 110 ohms. This is the answer for part one. And ZLN is the answer for part two. Then say it, what is the new complex reflection coefficient? So to find the reflection coefficient, we need the radius so just I got the radius from center to that point and we put it here so this value is 0.477 just it is slightly less than 4, uh, 4 8. So you can write 0.477. Or point, yeah. So now you got reflection is 0.477. And what is the angle? To find the angle here. So you take the radius at crossing this point now and you see that is somewhere here. So that is negative 42 degrees. So negative 42 degrees. So then you have to find, so it is set complex reflection coefficient, so it's at magnitude and an angle. So it is a phasor form and complex value. Now we have to find the standing wave ratio. So I take the same radius. And find the standing wave ratio from the SWR circle here. Uh, scale here. And So it is just uh, 
2.8 or 2.8 so sn is 2.79 So then it is said you have to add a short circuit step. Now you see, now the resistance just improve the reflection coefficient. Before we had reflection coefficient value was uh, 0.73, SWR was 6.3. Now it goes to 0.47 and SWR goes to 0.27 or 28. So the system was improved because the reflection at SWR both are uh, less than the than before. So we reduce or minimize the SWR little bit, but still the system is not reflection free. If you want to get reflection free system, gamma L must be zero, or SN will be one. So now what we can do? So now we can add a short circuit step in series at zero distance from the load. So now here, with in addition to this series resistance, we also add a step. So we add a short circuit step. Short circuit step at the load load location. So this was ZLN. Now I am adding a step here. And this step is the same location to the load. So location is not a matter here. It is still on the load point, load side. So the step is on the step is located at load so it is a still at the load so uh, so you don't need to find the distance and as the st stub is already in the load so what will be my new impedance so new impedance let's say we name it z l n s so z l n s so z l n is as up to this you got Z L N and if you look from here that will be Z L N S and Z L N S will be Z L N plus Z S tab. S -tab. So just we are adding the impedance, the load impedance with series resistance plus the step impedance. Now, what, what was the load impedance? So load impedance at this point was 1.5 minus Z 1.2. So we are required the step is equal to, so we require Z step equal to plus j 1.2 so here you see in in comparing to the regular step we always make this value one but this is not a regular step because in regular step we go to r equal to one circle but here we are not moving to r equal to one circle we just uh, adding a step on the load point, on the load location. So you cannot make this real part one here. Keep the real part as it is. Add a step to minimize the imaginary part. So if you add a step now, the value of Z step is this. So this is lower case. So if you were to find the upper case Z step, that will be J 120 ohms.
so and what will be the z l n s uppercase so that is obvious so we will considering the plus j 1.2 so you will come up with 1.5 times 100 so 150 ohms because you have uh, the line impedance and the stub impedance uh, combined load impedance and stub impedance so you are uh, cancelling out them we have only 1.5 so the total impedance will be 150 ohms so the part this is said 150 ohms so now I am showing this on the chart so we are here at this point you have to add plus 1.2 so plus 1.2 is this value so this is plus 1.2 so if you extend this so you will see a value over here that is 0.36 or you can write uh, sorry 0.13 on 39 lambda so it is on 3 lambda the, 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 this value here so you have to find the length of the step so to find the step length so you have to start from zsc point so this is your zsc and zsc is this point this is the zsc point so from this zsc point from the zsc point you have to go you have to go all the way to this so that's the length so from here to here is the length So length of the stub the step is 0.139 lambda or you can write 1.39 meter. So you got the stub length, so that's the L. So this is said L. The question says the length of the step DS. So we should write DS. So DS is this. So DS is this mass. So now also you have to find. draw a new circle uh, of reflection circle and you have to show the new impedance so now if you add uh, a stop the impedance becomes 1.5 so it becomes 1.5 so 1.5 is somewhere here so this is your 1.5 so now you draw another circle. So this is my new circle and at this circle what will be the reflection value just put this on the reflection circle line here so that is 0 0.2 so you got reflection equal to 0 0.2 so now you got a new reflection z l n s is 0 0.2 and the angle is plus minus uh, angle is 0 degrees so angle is 0 degrees here 
so angle is 0 degrees so now you got the new reflection value and this is your new point so you got ZLNS and what is the standing wave ratio at this ca case so in this case your standing wave ratio standing wave ratio is 1.4 1.5 so you got your standing wave ratio is the question use the notation standing wave ratio SNS 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 is 1.5 so now So what is the standing wave ratio on the stop? So now the question says what is the standing wave ratio on the stop? So the on the stop is somewhere here. So as you know this is short circuit. So the impedance here is uh, zero. So as you know the formula says the standing wave ratio formula is one plus reflection one minus reflection and as it is short circuit so 100% will be reflected back so on the stop this is short circuit so I am think uh, assuming only up for this segment so on the stop so this is 1 plus 1 1 minus 1 so that is infinity so you got a standing wave ratio on the stop it is always true that a standing wave ratio So for, for any type of stop, standing wave ratio on the stop is always zero on the stop is, sorry, always infinity. So standing wave ratio on the stop is always infinity, no matter it is short circuit stop or open circuit stop, series stop or parallel stop, so it always infinity. So now the last part says Smith chart use Smith chart to determine the value of another series resistance R in order to get a reflection free transmission line. Determine the distance of the series resistance from the combined load. So you have to find the value of R and also the distance of the series resistance. Now you know the our final step is to make the system reflection free reflection free so now we are we are assuming that our reflection will be zero or a standing wave ratio will be one so that's the final outcome of this step so so far we got a standing wave 1.5 reflection 0.2 so our system is gradually uh, improving because the initial reflection was 0.6 or sorry 0.7 at the 0.7 then it becomes 0.47 now it becomes 0.2 so it is gradually increasing yes sorry decreasing now we have to make it zero so how we can make it zero so to make it zero we have to add another series resistance so here we have to add another resistance but this time we don't add resistance right after here we have to go some distance and add a resistance so we have to know how far to go and what will be the value for resistance look at the smith chart here so now you have our your transmission line is here so from this transmission line move to the move along the transmission line in the clockwise direction until you reach at this point at this point so if you reach at up to this point you will get you will get a minimum value and what is the distance up to this is uh, lambda over 4 right so it is 0.25 
at this point 5 so it will be 0.25 lambda so you have to go 0.25 lambda so from here you have to move 0.25 lambda so now we have to move 0.25 lambda so we have to move 0.25 lambda equal to 2.5 meter from the so this this is my combined load now so this is the combined load from the combined load and if you go up to this point what will be the impedance here so just look at this mixture the below here is 6 0.65 6 pipes slightly higher so maybe 0.652 so you can write the value here the value at this point z prime so now we can write z prime is this method says point six z prime is point six uh, five two right six five two so if you want to reach at center so how how much resistance you have to add so at center so you have to add a resistance over here so that you can go to one so the, you have 0.652 so how much resistance you have to add look me let me find lower case r that will be 1 minus 0.652 so that is Zero point three four eight, or you can write R equal to thirty four point eight ohms. So this is the series resistance you have to add to make the system reflection free, and the resistance must be placed at two point five meter or point two five lambda. So now we add a resistance here, and if you add a resistance now. The impedance for this part up to this, the impedance will be 1. Or you can write uppercase big A, Z will be 100, right? So the total impedance now is equal to the transmission line impedance. So the system becomes reflection free. So lowercase is 1. Now we are adding here 34.8 ohms. 34.8 ohms that's the r value so this is how to solve the question here so we solve for series uh, step short circuit step you can practice for you can practice for series open circuit step we add resistance then a step you can add a step first then resistance or so on so you need to know or know the procedure and solve your solve the problem according to the question statement don't memorize the procedure but try to understand uh, how to solve this. What is the idea of solving uh, speech chat problem? Thank you.